Well, welcome everyone to the Northampton Planning Board meeting of September 28th, 2023. Um, this meeting is being recorded because we're not only here at Council Chambers, but we're also um, online via Zoom. Um, we usually open the meetings with a public comment period for any items that are not on the agenda, tonight's agenda. Um, those agenda items are a uh, continuation for a project on North Main Street in Leeds, a major site plan for a hotel on Con Street, a uh, site plan review for a project on Lincoln Ave, and something up on Ridgeview by Severn Builders, Ridgeview Road. So if you'd like to comment on any other business about the city or the planning in the city or your whatever, please come to the podium or text to, if you're in Zoom, you can text and Carolyn or I will read those texts. See anybody out there? All right, hearing none, um, we're going to uh, open up a continuation from July 27th. And then again on 914 of a request for a special permit site plan for two curb cuts at North Main Street at 420 North Main Street Leeds, map ID 11C-55. And I understand that. Um, the update for this application, so it was continued twice and um, the applicant has submitted plans that um, consists of one 24 foot wide curb opening at the southerly end of the project, which is allowed by right. So therefore there's no need for the request for special permit for two curb cuts. So they are asking for a withdrawal of the application. So that's why we're not gonna have a presentation. Good. Good. Good to make a motion to- Yeah, so you need to it. allow withdrawal and, um, I mean, you need to vote to allow the withdrawal. And you can um, typically it's either withdraw with prejudice or without prejudice. And so um, my recommendation would be allow withdrawal with prejudice. So that means they can't come back within two years with the same project. They have to wait two years to come back. If you allow it without prejudice, then they can come back anytime within two years. And ask for the same thing. And why wouldn't we want them to be able to come back within two years if it made sense for them? Um, because it's just more work for the planning office, or yeah, I mean the idea is, I mean, typically if there's a withdrawal, um, and there because the applicant needs to work things out, the the boards approve it with. Out prejudice so that there's no problem for them having that. Mm -hmm. But um, yes, I mean it's a, it's time consuming. So yep. if someone yep. keeps you know reapplying because okay. they see they might not be getting what they want, so they withdraw and then they reapply again for the same thing. Um, okay. You obviously don't have to, you can vote any way you want, but um, that that's sort of the standard. You want to make a motion with or without prejudice. And it came back with a yeah. 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 Right. and if he continues to do some work up there, has a way to do it that doesn't need any permit from the planning office, then it'll just be monitored by the building office, the building inspector, um, and, DPW. and DPW. All right, any other questions about this withdrawal? All right, is there a motion? <laughs> uh, I don't really know what if we should do it with or without prejudice. So I'm waiting for someone else to make a motion. Yeah. I move to approve the withdrawal of the application for a special permit site plan at 420 North Main Street with prejudice. Oh. Ooh. A second. Right. Motion's been made. Seconded. Any discussion? 
I thought that uh, like this was this whole interesting conversation. It sounds vaguely cancelable what we're doing. I don't even know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is the uh, one up in no, I know the, you know the project, yeah. yeah. I just don't know what the prejudice part is. It means they can't come back within two years for the same with the same plans. They can't raise request a second curb cut within two years. No, well, it would be a second curb cut in the very same place that they had proposed it. So if they shifted and it was sort of, it was considered a new layout, then they could. Oh, okay. So they can't just come back with what they brought on the 14th right. or no, the 27th. Yeah. Which we already asked them to come back and make changes anyway. So. Right. Yeah. And I guess there could potentially be another new planning board at that point, so that would make sense. And I guess the prejudice makes sense. Yeah. So right. And we, for, right. Even for this one, it would be a different one. So that's fine with me. All right. Motions remain seconded. Um, it's a second. Oh, sorry. Chris. It is, a, oh, keep it, going. it is a confusing sentence. Prejudice makes sense in this case, but you're yeah, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. My <laughs> language can't keep up with that. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, all those in favor of the motion? All right. It's unanimous. Good luck to the applicant. I do like the new plan. That's kind of what I was thinking we should do. Are they doing a non for offered? No, I think I think what it is is they'll be able to use the the Mayas catering property to back there, the semi in. I read it as that they're just going to drive over the grass. Seems like the normal way of those doing things. <laughs> you drive a truck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and, and now we'll open up our second um, application. It's a continuation of a hearing from August 24th and September 14th for a special permit major site plan for 109 room hotel and 31 unit residential building by Rankin Holdings LLC at 115 Con Street, map ID 3933. Um, this is a special permit, so we need five of seven members to yeah. authorize this to move it forward. Uh, um, and this is uh, the project at the old Gazette building. Um, is the applicant here for a discussion? Well, I'm representing the Berkshire Design Group, Carlos Nieto. Hello, Carlos. <laughs> yeah, and, and, um, so, and, and I'm also substituting Jeff, who is actually not. Not, not, not here. Okay. Um, and I, I imagine that the other rest of the team might be just joining the Zoom. So I, I don't, not, no, 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 because of that. Okay. Um, it's not clear, but do you have a presentation or? Um, um my understanding was that what we were going to be discussing today was that there was one item that was kind of um, waiting, which was the drainage on this project. Um, we've been working with Doc McDonald for the past couple of weeks. I believe that yesterday Doug had approved what we had um, submitted. He, he told us that he was going to be uh, putting some comments together for you so that you would understand what his point of view is on the project. But my understanding, again, and I don't want to put words on Doc McDonald's mouth, but my understanding was that he was going to be approving this um, with some conditions. Basically, there's um, some uh, filtering devices or phosphorus that um, there is really no standards yet in the Massachusetts for. Um, we found standards that are in, for other uh, jurisdictions like Rhode Island, and we have submitted um, all that documentation to him um, for him to you know, approve that. Uh, but my understanding was that he was going to approve the permit with some the condition that we submit that material to him. So I can fill out, so a stormwater permit was issued, I think it came in today. So that was the one item that the board had to wait for because you would not be able to close. Thanks. You would not be able to close the permit um, hearing without the um, issuance of that stormwater permit that's been issued. And um, so those are separate conditions from what you need to consider because that's a separate permit. Um, so then you're back to um, evaluating, you know, evaluating whether there was anything else you wanted to um, to see. Um, 
there was an, you know, Department of Public Works continues to be concerned about um, the traffic evaluation, which um, I think the issue is not, the issue for them is how does it relate to the roundabout? <laughs> it's, um, but the traffic report that was submitted in your application shows that there'll be um, an increase of trips um, from the previous Gazette use, not really evaluating what the retail use was before that, um, but didn't say anything about any kind of drop in level of service, but that's such a small increase. Um, you know, I think they, without doing a more detailed analysis of whether there'd be a change in level of service, um, they have said, and and the zoning doesn't require incremental um, um, adjust or um, impact um, to in, to make a payment into traffic mitigation to address incremental impacts or increases in traffic in this district because this is a district where we want to encourage new um, development. So, Karen, so there's there's no project that could be put on that parcel that would ever trigger a traffic study. It's not that they would, we wouldn't, yeah. we wouldn't make them put in a, a light at the intersection and say, right. We would, we would say, give, pay us money, pay us a thousand dollars per increase per trip. And then this, the city no, will decide. No, no mitigation fees. No, 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 I know. I know there isn't in this, in, but if like somewhere else, because I've, I've been, I've dealt with projects where, you know, we're putting a big, mall and we're putting a big mall at this intersection so we need to like change the timing of the light or something right but that would never happen on this parcel in this zoning district because we say no just give us money for the trips and then the city will decide how to spend that money and add a light there if it needs to not no so there's still a traffic study required for major projects but the we've we've gone down to the fine grain to try to throughout most of the city we've said look we need to address the little bits of incremental increases in trips that are generated by a specific use and each applicant is required to offset that incremental increase on a particular property and if they can't make safety improvements as part of the project, they have the option to make a payment in lieu of safety improvements for those incremental increases in trips. There's another standard that requires that if you're dropping a level of service, whether or not you make imp you have to address that drop in level of service from That's what I you know A to B to C. When I read that paragraph. Mm -hmm. It seemed like. As long as you're not dropping a level of service, then there's a payment that goes into this. In this zone, there, that payment is zero. Right. But we don't know if there's a drop in the level of service because there's no. But there, there's, um, I'll pull the traffic study. There is a traffic study. Oh, it's just, okay. they didn't go into the analysis of the I, level I of service. Was, drop. Oh, there's 86 more trips in the peak hour or something. Right. So analyze intersections and say there's level of service c to d or something there was none of that right so how do we know if the level of service drops or not so we're so um that's sort of dpw is saying well um how do we know that however we don't we're not going to put a new signal in because we have a roundabout that is better than a signal <laughs> you know right at that block um and I don't know if it was 86 or um, because we look at, you know, we're concerned with peak hour trips. Um, I'm sorry. Let me just pull this up. Yeah. I'm just going by memory from yeah. a couple of oh, weeks ago, that's, but that's a real good question because the LOS is so important. For right. I mean, I'm just, I, just reading that paragraph. That's kind of how I read it. It's like, yeah, there's no payment for the increase in trips, but that's if there's no increase in level of service and we don't know if there's an increase in level of service. But and I guess I'm not talking about uh, the roundabout intersection. It's more the because uh, there's a cross street there, isn't there? That yeah, right that, that is on mm -hmm. right avenue where the liquor store is. Yeah, 
Yep. There's a couple of other intersections. Yep. And we went through that with, uh, certainly, we ran into traffic problems with Netta, the marijuana place when they came in. Right. But I forgot how that application went in terms of, I don't know if their traffic, if they did a full traffic study and if they had LOS benchmarks that we could use. But... Yeah. But they're under a whole different category. Cannabis place, cannabis is under has a special mitigation status for traffic. Does it really in that district? In any zone, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, and of course, that's dramatically changed <laughs> since that was. Um, so right, so eighty six peak hour trips. So across an hour, eighty six more. Uh, that's the projection over time with the hotel and the residential and that's the full um, build-up yes um so um so but they're also arguing that they're these are actually smaller because they're different peak times so residential is a different peak time from a hotel mm -hmm. so um they're um suggesting that it's um represents less than four percent of daily traffic increase um and it doesn't it doesn't tie over to a level of service you know whether or not there's a level of service drop um but um so i think that's the information in front of you so there's their record they're suggesting that's a four percent increase over the previous gazette use um and um so it's up to you all to make a determination about whether that's an appropriate assessment. I think that um, the, and as a, so normally, if this had been in a different district where we were encouraging new development in the downtown and the gateway project. So for 26 additional peak hour trips, that would be times whatever the monetary value was that we had identified and had modified in the zoning and we just don't have that for here mm -hmm. and that would be the end of the story they'd right. pay whatever so now we're saying as a community we think it's appropriate to encourage this kind of development here without making that incremental um, trip generation assessment right so. and just to be clear those 86 trips were both for the hotel and the apartment and the apartment condo building right but because their peaks are different, it's not going to be all at once, right? So the residential peak is different than a hotel peak. So it's weekends for hotel and, you know, weekdays for residential. Right. But of course, 4% increased traffic. You know, if you're at a level of service, if you're just hanging on to a level of service B, that could trip you to a C or... Or if you're firmly in the middle of a C, then you stay a C. Like it, you, there's no way to know. But sounds like you'd feel much more comfortable if this traffic study had given us data on the LOS strongly one way or the other. But uh, I'm just but I always worry about. Yeah, uh, yeah. I just want an interpretation of what our zoning bylaw says about it. Well, and it is something to flag next time for a project of this size and that in any of these gateway areas or downtown. If, uh, I just don't know if our, if our zoning is clear. Either it says yeah. we need to know the level of service or it says because we're in this in the zone, we don't care what the level of service is. Right, we haven't, we you're do. right, we haven't adjusted it to for those two things to be um aligned i guess right. yeah right and i don't actually care what either yep. way. okay for the record all right <laughs> and so there's no condition about traffic mitigation in no. pertaining to the traffic right. one um so beyond the traffic there was another condition that we discussed about the build out or lack of a build out of the apartment complex in front and that we wanted to see they're going to start with the hotel first, yes. um, but we don't want the footprint of the apartment complex to be used as parking. And, and, and what's being proposed is to have a basic green space in that area. So it's going to be 
blow and seed either with a um, grass type of seed or, or some type of uh, meadow type of seeding, um, something that will be attractive, low maintenance too, so that it's not you know, burdened and you know as it keeps going because you're going to have to try to build something. Yep. There in the future. Yep. <laughs> but that's what they're proposing, so that then you don't have you wouldn't be burdened in that area. There's curves and change. Yep. Wow. Some wildflowers, pollinators, my plants might be nice, but we'll pass on that, Jenna. Well, I think what we talked about last time was that it, it, it's good to set it up so that there isn't parking in front. But part of the goal of at least part of my goal was that the front building actually gets built, which putting in loam and seed doesn't reassure. So we were looking for a bond or some kind of um, conditional permit or something else that would allow us to have some assurance that that front building gets built because part of this permit is a waiver from the um, setback because of where the curb already is and the sidewalk. And then we're looking at a hotel way, way, way back in the property. So um, last time we asked the applicant to talk to the city or talk amongst yourself, figure out what made the most sense and come back with a plan for how to create that assurance. Yeah, so right now, my understanding is that the client would not like to head into a bonding type of situation because it, it you know, it, it sort of gets not the, the way that they want to look. They, they don't know if that modern project is going to be com completed, you know, in a matter of, um, of the time that, that they really might want to have in the bond. So what they're proposing is just to create a green space there that, again, manage. just green space so that we can prevent the cars from being there. It's curved, so yeah, it's not like it's allowed for cars to go there. Um, but yeah, that they yeah, do not yeah. want to head on the on, on that um, option of having a bond or be bonded to guarantee that they're going to be doing this building from that. I believe that's what you're saying, that you want yeah. to create a, some type of bond so that they can guarantee that there's going to be a building there. Again, the applicant or the owner's uh, perspective, that he don't, he, they don't want to do that. They, But they will offer to create a green space. I think we're looking precisely for them to guarantee that the, I mean, I'm looking for them to guarantee that the front building is going to get built because otherwise we're permitting a completely, this is a completely different project. And if it is just the hotel that gets built, I don't think that we would permit it as designed. And, and, I, and that's the intention of them is to build the whole project. But, you know, understanding. We could make it much simpler. Having the last 30 years for COVID and situations like that to put up on that we're going to be building something in an X amount of time, it really could be unfavorable for the owner because we don't know what's going to happen in the future. Sure. We can make it much simpler and just we can't get a certificate of occupancy for the back building until you build the front building. Simpler. That, bond? that would be much simpler. It, yeah, I think it's like a cluster development. You permit the whole thing. You don't permit a piece of it. So I mean, I understand he doesn't want a bond. That's understandable. Yeah. <laughs> he he did, uh, you know, he they came forward obviously with a phased project and i think it um it makes sense to have some kind of um contingency that that front building works and i like these the path you're going on for the um as an alternative to the bond because that's the expensive thing for financing sure and um and frankly, I think it's not, I think you're just, you need to look at it more, and you are <laughs> objectively, but just sort of reiterating for everyone who's listening and for the applicant that it's not, a, a. we understand that the applicant has good intentions to build both and is interested in building both. But as Carlos mentioned, we don't know what's going to happen and COVID could happen and land transfer could happen. And so um, I think you're right to be concerned about what happens at the beginning. But I think that if you tied it, so if by can't get a CO unless he's pulled the building permit for the front building, is that what well, you're- I don't know. There's a lot of ways you could do it. Yeah. I agree a bond seems like a complicated thing and a developer would just say, fine, the bond is part of my cost of doing business, you know, whatever. It's not a big deal. So- I don't know. It's one project. Let's look at it as one project. Yeah. I don't know. You can phase it the other way. I don't know. That's not our problem. That's he, and also he could flip it to anybody. And I, I mean, I don't. It doesn't matter who the owner is and what this they is, say. This is only an issue because yeah. they they're proposing to build the back building first. So right. if they were building the front building first, we would have no right. Yeah, it matter whatsoever right. because that's what our zoning yeah. encourages. Right. That building on the yeah, and I'm not the bond. I have no stake in it being a bond specifically. What I heard the first hearing, not this past one, but the 
originally hearing from you was that there were several mechanisms that would allow that yeah. to happen. Um, so whichever one of those it is, but just planting grass in the front is not sufficient to me. So I don't know what the other options are other than the tying it to a... Yeah, I mean, the permit. other pieces, you could have the condition that ties it that the building permit for the front building has to be pulled before the CO is requested for the hotel. And if that's an issue, then they could come back for an amendment at that time. But pulling a building permit is also doesn't mean anything. But you can't, you can't. Build a permit, but you can file for a building permit and sit on it for 10 years. I mean, you don't, you Seven know. years, I think. Yeah. Right. I mean, but it doesn't make you build a building. It's just a building permit. I mean, it costs money, I guess. But yeah. again, it's the cost of doing business. Yeah. So, um, you know, we have a term in, in the um, zoning that talks about substantial completion, but I think that might be a little too far along. It may be construction commencing um, on the front part. Does that work? As long as a... Uh, or a foundation uh, permit or something? Uh, uh a partially completed building doesn't sit there for five or seven years just so that but financially that doesn't help anybody right so i think there would be a disincentive not to complete a building well, i see that a lot in residences that uh, they start the foundation they get up maybe a frame but then all of a sudden they pull out from it um the financial implications, I, I am respectfully saying, but the financial implications of a house to this type of project is very different. Yep. So I would yep. say that there's much more incentive for you to finish it. Yep. Also, it's, it, it's a larger, it's not just a family that's sure. Oh, sure. Okay, go somewhere sure. else. This is, it's yeah, I mean, I think. I would hope that whoever ends up building this, whether it's this person who the third or fourth person who buys the property with disapproval, I mean, it could be anybody has the financial, you know, wherewithal to do it. You know, that's sort of a separate issue, I think, in a sense, from what we're saying. All right. So are we zeroing in on uh on a foundation? Foundation work has been completed before a certificate of occupancy. The yeah, I, I agree with Chris. I, I if there's something later than September fifth, it's not in. The... Jeff was in here last meeting. He was saying there was something more recent than September fifth, and I just didn't see it in the file uh, two weeks ago. And I apologize, I haven't relooked at it um, in the past two weeks. But I thought there was a. He said there was like a September seventh set or something. I can't either. It was a revised September six. Yeah, I don't think it ever got put into the file. And Unless it's named oddly. Looking at, I know that there was a facing plan. Um, yeah, there's just, I'd like to see the, um because we had just talked about the chargers, close to the residential building. We had talked about six foot wide islands. Yep. And then, of course, the loam and seed that you're talking about up front. So I just haven't seen a plan that has that on it. Yeah. The, there were I added, um, EV stations that were added. Uh, some of them are where I know they're in the back of the hotel building, but there were some added to the front, which are going to be serving closer to the um, residential. And there's uh, three of those that would serve six cars. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what we have for September 6. So, okay. I just want to see it. Um, <laughs> hold on a second. Yeah. Hold up the wrong one. Hold up August. <laughs> Once in a while, one of these PDFs goes into the wrong folder. You know? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I have September fifth. But you say there's a sixth. September sixth. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Okay. This actually came up two weeks ago. Same mm -hmm. question. We hadn't seen it. You got to the the repository, but did they prompt you for a password? Yeah. 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 Oh, uh, if you if you just Google like archive Northampton, like it takes, there's a website, there's different law, there's different addresses for like a password or a non-password version. There's like a city website that points you towards the one that's appropriate. And we discovered last week that if you're on the city hall public Wi-Fi, you can't get to any of them. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. That one works. Yeah.
Um, so there was one that went to DPW and it came to me later, but I don't know if that's September 6th. I'm sorry, just in one more minute here and I'll see if I can find it. And you don't have a thumb drive. I'm just asking somebody else in the office who's worked on this much more actively than I have um, just to see if what they, they sent the emails. Sounds like it's only slightly more actively. Uh, I'm going to get you to order. If you, uh, okay, I think I have it. Here. Actually, what I do easier, I think, is if you click on the link above it for the other permit, you can get right into the public version of the site and then back out to look at by Mac from, ID. From, from the, yeah, from the um, staff memo. Um, so so I click on, like, the permit. The click on the permit file. Go up and click on a different one, like for Main Street. Because that'll put you into the public file, and oh, then I'm okay. just searching out from there. And you search for the... Yeah, 39A. Oh, crap. Um, so, um, Let me just look at my Okay. And of course, now I'm actually finding us the original permits for the Gazette building. So, oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so I don't know. It looks like there was a confusion where the, the plan set actually the date wasn't updated to September 7th, even though I mean, I'm looking through emails. <laughs> it says that, but um, I'm just going to see if this has the new charging stations and I'll share it. Okay. Thank you. Um. In which case, the one in the file is the updated one. It just doesn't say the seventh, but let me just double check. And it, it would set the, I think, the sixth. The one in the file is the fifth. I'm sure. So it, it, there was one, re I guess this is the, as, again, as far as I understand, there was there should have been one that says September 5th and then six right after. Sure, that makes yeah. sense. And Caroline, okay, I don't see that okay. anywhere. <laughs> And I just emailed both of both uh, yeah, just asked everybody to see it. Uh, when did they send it? Uh, my understanding wasn't this was the latest sent. Okay. Um, Carlos, do you know where the new charging stations where they were located? Yeah, I can show you here on the plan. Okay. I see it. It looks it's like this. So we have a uh, set of charging stations that are yeah. behind with one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven extra ones. Oh, and they're the ones and right there. They're the ones for the residential. Okay, so the one that I have doesn't have that. So okay. we might just have to use paper copies because it doesn't look like I got the digital set. Um, I think there was a link sent and for some reason <clears throat> I can't find it in my download folder. All right. Because we <clears throat> approved the permit, we're approving this, 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 and this. Right. Yeah. So, um, you all wanted the charging ports, and I'll I'll keep looking. What if you want to pass that around? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, I don't. I don't know that I feel comfortable approving a set of plans that neither us nor you seem to have actually reviewed. I have viewed them, and I saw the list of things that were made that were changed. Um, the other thing is, you can also. Just have that in your condition that the charging ports be added before they get a building permit. And you know, I mean, that happens all the so time, right? Sure. You yeah, don't we see do that all the time. Plans. It's for the hotel and the ones that are grayed out are the ones that are going to be in the future. The ones that are dark are the ones, meaning that they have conduit and everything already set for them. But okay. the, the darker ones are the ones that are going to be permanent. 
So it includes these and then also the ones with that. Okay. And put it at the residential ones. Are so those things. the only changes? The median yeah. and then the yeah. And the yeah. 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 by the median, you mean the change to the uh make it six foot yeah. wide. The, the, the one wide question is what yeah. ones so the residential so down there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Um and I then think, the blues are yeah. yes. Six foot median. It's over here. Uh these were the six foot widening those making ones wider. Okay. And these are the same residential again because these are ones. Yeah. Yeah, the residential are all in order. Okay. Because sure. you have way more you have way more than you need back there. Yeah. Which is totally cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then the, the only other thing I wanted to see was the plan where you're showing kind of the Roman seed in the in the front. For what it is order. right now is it, it they just we just have a facing plan. So there's there's no real, there's not a plan that shows this area will be low and seated. Okay. It's just the facing plan. And I think it was just um, the, what we were recommending to do in that area. Okay. Oh, I don't so that have would a be plan a that shows this, this is all okay. uh, that would be a condition seated. that we would. So we would, yeah, we would definitely. Okay. I have the plans. <laughs> hey. Sorry. Well, that's August, August seven. That's August. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> that's seven. It's like that must be it. <laughs> Up in the chair. Okay. Never mind. Uh, we saw the plans that evidence yeah, uh, charging states many changes. No, so changing to the yeah. medians <clears throat> between the parking. Um, and we're going to make a condition about the loam and sheet, that footprint, um, and then you, which I think is very important because part of that phase one area or phase one undeveloped area was the parking lot yeah. because yeah. that building. So that's like even more paved area. In, again, just to add, it is in our advantage also to loam and seed that area too because we have drainage structures that are going to be installed from the beginning because the old drainage needs to be uh, created and we need to stabilize anyways all that area. Mm -hmm. So it's in best interest for everybody to have some type of vegetative cover there um, that you know uh, <clears throat> makes sure that we don't have erosion and have any of those issues. Right, mm -hmm. right. We just want to make sure all the existing pavement is also yes. ripped out. Yeah. Yeah. Good. There was also, we were requesting a, a stamp lighting plan, photometric plan. Let me double check. That's for a certificate of, but I mean, that's after installation. Okay. So it wouldn't, you have lighting, lighting is there. This would be a condition saying after you're all said and done, you have to prove to us that you install the lighting according to your plan and that it meets the zoning. So that would be, that's a standard Fire, condition. Yeah. And actually both buildings. Yes. <clears throat> So the old and the tricky one is uh, the language around the condition uh, about the front building mm -hmm. prior to an occupancy permit for the hotel, the yep. applicant shall X. Um, do you want foundation to be under construction as part of that condition? prior to issuance of a CO for the hotel, mm -hmm. that the foundation for the residential building be under construction? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Is that okay? Do you think with the applicant? I, I'm gonna be very honest. I mean, unless the owner or applicant is gonna be commenting right now, yeah. I would not, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna uh, say yes, let's do that. Um, let's, if you want to have a written draft of this and we move then to the next hearing, but I would not say uh, on your oh, watch. Yeah, I mean, if there's nobody else from uh, the owner here too uh, bad. to make that decision, I don't feel like I want to make that decision for Well, you don't have to make a decision, honestly. So yeah. that's yeah. fine. We we yeah. have to make the decision. Yeah, that's fine. It, and actually, the owner doesn't have to make a decision tonight either. <laughs> Uh, well, I don't know. We, I don't know. We're um, talking about this. Well, let's yeah. see. We have a public comment period. Right. Uh, let's just for a minute. Yeah. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak 
um, either for or against this application, comment on the application and the presentation here in council chambers. Nope. How about out there in uh, Let's see, chats. There are no chats, no public comment. Okay. So David, you have a brainstorm? <laughs> yeah, I don't think you want to hear it. I mean, I don't care about the loam and seed or the paved parking, whatever. This is a nasty part of town, and it doesn't really make it much better to put loam and seed. So I just I'd be inclined to approve it as a total project and not approve of the phasing has to do with their financing or whatever they have going on, and it's really none of our business. And again, they might not be the ones to build this someday. So I don't see why we. I mean, why is it? Why isn't the front phase one? I mean, it's like who cares? That's their problem. No offense. I mean, I hope they build it, but like, I don't think it's our problem to solve. Like, what we want to do is make a better city, and building like a hotel, which I'm sure will be a fine hotel. But like where the Gazette building was, it's like it doesn't really even improve much for the city. I guess there's like tax stuff. So I, I mean, I don't know. I'm mixed, I guess. I don't really want to approve it in this phased way. <clears throat> I'm sure that, uh, that, you know, I hope the owner is a very nice person. But again, like we don't know who that is. And they might, you know, yeah. very common practice to get approvals and then sell property. You know, that's property's worth more than once the approval's attached, right? So, and there's the, once it's a, approved, like there's not really anything to do about it, so. And I think and I, the only thing I wanted to point out is that he owns so Bell right next door. It, meaning so that no, it, it's of no consequence. That, that it's not, uh, it's not connected at this point with that site. Like, that's all I wanted to say, not respecting what you said. Sure, no, I get, I get it. Yeah, I mean, again, but who knows what happens. But if we approve it with these conditions about the build out on the front, that that has to happen, that would will happen before occupancy happens, then <clears throat> that condition goes if it's sold to another developer, right? Sure, that's true. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean the foundation thing. I guess it's a funny way of doing it, but I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, I want to work with them as much as possible. Yeah. To make this project happen, um, I just. The most important thing for our zoning is to have that building right up on the street. So if, if we were getting that in phase one, again, I would be all for yeah. phasing with no positions, but because we're not getting that in phase one, then we need to figure out a creative way that works, you know, as well as it can for the applicant. Yeah. Yep. While we still getting the city what the city needs. We asked them about the phasing at the first hearing, and they said that they wanted to do both buildings at once, but couldn't get the financing lined up for it. And I don't, I don't remember them providing a specific reason for why the hotel was going first, but they just said for them it wasn't possible to do both. So that's how we ended up here. Of like, okay, but what's so that there's plenty of developers in the world who could do this project. Sure, I mean, this is something specific to this person who's there. How their financing is set up. It's really not our problem. Yeah, I mean, I. I sympathize, but I mean, maybe they should sell it to someone who has the wherewithal to do it. I don't know. Like that's their decision. So if we um, approve the project tonight with that that condition, um, and the developer, who unfortunately is not here, the owner um, doesn't want to abide by that, then what does he do? Reapply. You could apply for amendment. You could appeal the permit. You could appeal the permit. Yeah. I mean, applying for an amendment is probably more straightforward because the appeals goes to, through court so um it would make more sense to apply for an amendment and then that would give him the opportunity to present a, a rationale for how it could guarantee that that building would be there i mean you, you all asked for that information yep. and it you know, didn't I, I felt like we tried i tried to be very clear last hearing you did that we needed them to come up with something <clears throat> and present it to us yeah now the owner doesn't even show up tonight. And Carlos is in a tough spot. <laughs> no, yeah. no offense, Carlos. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think we said specifically last time, because it was in the staff memo about the low and seat, it's like that doesn't address our concerns. Go, you know, right. talk about it. So um, yeah, that's unfortunate. So, you know, an option is to continue the hearing again and to come back with another team. Um and have the owner here and give them more time to work on it. Um, I'm sure that they want to 
start doing something there before winter sets in. But that, again, is in our issue. So that's one option. Or another option is to move forward with a motion and approve that with the conditions. I'm all for being as creative as we can with the condition. But yeah. the city needs to have assurances that the second building will be built. Mm -hmm. I mean, it sounds like if the issue is a financing thing that's not working right now, there's no way the owners can say, oh, yeah, the financing is going to work in five years. Like, right. They don't know if right. the financing problems, that they don't, they're not the ones to make that decision. Their financiers are. Mm -hmm. So we should have the banks come in and tell us, like, it's just, again, we can't do it that way. Like, we can, so, we can approve a plan. And I guess this, the foundations are expensive enough that you'd have to be financed <laughs> to do it. It just makes me think, like, if that's so much that they would come back for an amendment, that to me tells me, well, they don't really want to build the front building or they don't really have a path to getting there. So in that case, would I would we approve just the back building as its own? Probably not, right? Not so it seems like. But they could come back and ask for an amendment to just build to build the front one first, which would be fine to me. Sure, because there's no. But they wouldn't need to come back for an amendment for that. They could make that choice on their own. Oh, because there's no. But you're, but you're just saying what you would be saying is you're building, as David said, you're approving the permit as a whole. Mm -hmm. The special permit actually relates to that front building and not quite meeting those setbacks, right? Mm -hmm. Um, or build two lines. So you're approving the whole thing. And what they've said is they're building the hotel first and you just want assurances that they're going to build the whole thing. If they start with the front building, as you said before, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. They've met the permit condition. Got it. Okay. There's no non-compliance. Right. Got it. Right. right. Okay. I'm going to spend all this time doing this form-based code in Florence. Like, and now we're just going to be like, yeah, it doesn't matter. Right. Like, right. Well, no, I think it matters, matters right? right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm fine with the concrete provision. The foundation. The foundation. Yeah. yeah. Stacy, okay. All right. So you haven't, I don't think you've closed the public hearing. No, we didn't. So uh, I don't think we need to work with Carlos anymore on these details. So is there a motion to close the public hearing? Motion to close the public hearing. Second by Stacy. Traffic? Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. You just finished that. Wait, second. Stacy seconded. So, any discussion about closing the public hearing? Okay, none hearing none. Um, all those in favor of closing the public hearing. All right, so we're not continuing this hearing. Closed. Okay. Um, so, more discussion from the board. So, the traffic thing, I don't care about the traffic. <laughs> but I think it would be good to know what, what you know what our rules and regulations are around it. So that was a question I had. I, Sarah didn't know yeah. uh, last meeting. So yeah. I'm fine. If that's our standard of practice, that's totally fine. Well, and maybe it changes. It's a little confusing yep. in the code. Um, but for this project, I don't, I don't have traffic concerns for this project specifically. Yeah. So I was just curious about how our, how our code was interpreted. Well, thanks for raising that. I think it's an important thing. Um, yep. Good. So then we have uh, we we received um, assurances from the DPW that their permit is in order. Stormwater. Yep. yep. Um. There's a, a condition about prior to the CO, the applicant has a stamp lighting plan. Um. They already they. In the staff notes, we had another condition about additional EV ports, but they've already shown that on a plan, so that's not necessary. Then there's um, a stipulation, a condition that the front parking area, the footprint of the proposed building becomes loam and seed and not a parking lot, not, not paved. And then the last condition would be around prior to a certificate of occupancy the uh, developer needs to uh, begin work on the foundation. Do you still want that um, loam and seed um, even if you have the CO condition? How long will it take to build the hotel when they're ready for an certificate of CO, certificate of occupancy? I mean, it's going to be a construction site. So. I mean, we don't. I think we don't want the loan to see. We want them to build a building. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Well, in the meantime, I guess. Yes. Because they're not yep. using the parking. 
Right. Right. Well, and I think we heard the applicant say that it's in their best interest to not use that as parking anyway. So. But right. For stabilizing the system. Yeah. Okie doke. So I think I heard like that. Three conditions. Three conditions. Yep. Final plans to address any all any of the conditions um, submitted prior to 30, 30 days prior to issuance of building permit, prior to a certificate of occupancy, applicants shall submit a stamp lighting plan as built showing compliance with the lighting and all lights shall not exceed 3000 K um, color temperature. And prior to a certificate of op occupancy for the hotel, the applicant shall have commenced construction of the foundation of the residential building. Sounds good. Okay. Is there a motion to that effect? I move we approve, approve as Carolyn just summarized with the three conditions. The three conditions. Okay. And this is related to the plan of September 7th, 6th, September 6th. All right, is there a second? The mythical, I second. The motion has made and seconded with the three conditions. Any more discussion? All right, I appreciate everybody. Good discussion on this one. I'm sorry that you didn't have another team with you to help address some of these things, but yeah. say la vie. All right, um, all those in favor? Okay, it's unanimous. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, something a little more straightforward, maybe. Let's see. <laughs> so we're going to open up a site plan review for adding a third dwelling by John Gibbons and Alessandro Urbano at 4143 Lincoln Ave, map ID 25C055. We need a simple majority of four to seven members for the shared driveway, truly around the shared driveway. Uh, thank you for uh, your well, Hopefully, this will be a little easier. <laughs> um, so, we live on, uh, on Lincoln Avenue. Um, it's one of the cut through streets between uh, Bridge Street and, and North. Um, we bought our house in 2014, mm -hmm. the partner and I, Allie. Um, and uh, it was just two of us. Now, there's nine years later, there's five of us living in just over a thousand square feet. And we've been looking for a single family house for uh, three years now um, and haven't found anything within walking distance to town with. The, the yard that we have. So Lincoln is kind of special and uh, because the, the lots are very long. So we're on 0.37 acres. Um, we're our first floor, um, we, we rent out. Um, so we have a, a two family, the first floor is rented out. Um, and the second floor and part of the third floor is finished and is what, uh, what we live in. So our, our proposal is to, to build a single family behind our current two family. So here's our uh, existing um, site map. Um, here's Lincoln, here is our two family that we live in, and then we also have a uh, two car garage here. Um, so taking out some of the detail, these are the two structures on the property. And when we overlay the, um, the our proposed plan, you can see that the footprint of the garage and, and the single family house overlap a bit. There's not a huge addition to, um, to uh, to the structure here, uh, or to the footprint, sorry. So here is the proposed, um, the, our proposed plan. So we have um, our two family current house uh, here, and then uh, we have our single family house um, back here. Um, what we'll have to do is demolish the two car garage and the single family will overlap part of that uh, structure. Um, we've also, we have a, a, the space in between the houses wide enough to accommodate for five parking spots. I'll, I'll get into that. Um, and then we also have lengthened the uh, driveway to also accommodate two parking spots. Um, 
So our setbacks uh, are 12 and a half feet on the north. Uh, and we, that's Grand Person Den from the existing two family house that we live in now in our, our current garage. Um, and then 16 feet on the south. So we're um, within the, the, the 15 foot range there. Um, this was the hardest part, just figuring out the parking spot. So zoning required that we have five, five parking spots. Um, and so two for unit two, because it's over a thousand square feet with the, that third floor living space. Um, one for unit one, because it's less than a thousand square feet. And then two for our new house, the proposed new house. Um, and these are tandem parking spots. So um, we worked with uh, an architect and tried to figure out like all the templates for turning around. So zoning requires that uh, you have to be able to um, have a front facing exit from the driveway. So um, these are all the, the turnaround paths. So for the tandem cars that are back up here and pulling up forward for um, the, the second floor unit, it would be backing up here and pulling out forward. And for the, the first floor, backing up here and pulling out forward. Um, so this would accommodate the five spots being able to uh, uh, pull out front facing. Um, we don't envision as much environmental impact. There aren't any trees that need to be removed on the property um, to, to, to grow the house. Um, and we still have 69% open space with the, the new proposal. You know, there's still quite a bit of room space. And that was our main goal in this design is really keeping this yard because we use it a lot. We have three, three dumb kids. And so uh, the benefit were, of course, there's uh, mutual benefits. We hope that the, there's a, you know, a rental, uh, the rental market in town is, um, is really tough. And so this would provide another quality, well-maintained uh, rental housing within walking distance of town. Um, we would live in the back here um, and take care of the property, um, and the uh, the rental income could help offset some of the construction costs. And uh, we've been living here for nine years. We love our neighbors um, in our community, and we'd be able to still stay in our neighborhood. That's all I have. For Great. You. Great. You know, the, the, there's that funky little drainage line yeah. that comes across a, your abutters and. What is that all about? Do you know? Is it? I don't know. But I, um, yeah, two properties up did something similar. They built the second unit, yeah. and they had to be mindful of this drainage line. Yeah, I think what, from what we learned, we have to be um, five feet away from the drainage line if we're going two feet down. If I'm thinking about that mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So uh, DPW commented on there's actually an old, there is an easement on this one. We don't have a lot of easements in, in this neighborhood on drain lines, but there is one here. So they're recommending um, that the easement requires a five foot offset for any construction that's deeper than two and feet. And is the yeah. drain line a waistline? Is it a sewer? Storm or? drain. Just storm drain. Yeah. Um, and so protection of the catch basin is really important yeah. and the um, and not excavating. So I we would recommend that the um, that um, new plans be submitted prior to issuance of a building permit showing protection measures. So silt fence or some other kind of barrier that's at that five foot mark so that they're not there's not any mistakes with an errant excavator. Um, <laughs> And also protection of the catch basin with um, silt sock or other uh, mechanism. Did the DPW have other written comments about? Um, they did. Um, they didn't. The, the water and sewer lines, right, um, were not shown. I mean, these are typical and not shown properly. All of that stuff has to be done before a building permits issued anyway. Um, and the... Um, and so including the, you know, type of um, material and size of pipe um, and just commenting that new connections to the existing drain are not allowed um, and that they wanted the catch basin protected from material damage and sediment inflow. And then they also recommend that a simple erosion and sediment control plan be um, implemented to prevent off-site flow of sediments during construction. The city owned 
one. Um, the city maintains that during a easement. Okay. Yep. And it just runs through private properties. Mm -hmm. Because it, it goes back a hundred years. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask a clarifying question? Is the five feet away from the, the line or just the, the actual? Both. Okay. And there'll be new separate utilities for the new house, mm -hmm. electric, sewer, water. You're not piggybacking off the existing house. No, they'd be new utilities. <clears throat> Can you can you go back to the original plan that showed sure. the garage? Yeah. I just yeah. Yeah. Right. Or with both was was even better. Uh, this one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Carolyn, do we have any are there any concerns about I think it's a 15 foot setback and we're he's keeping it 12 6, but so the house um is it, it so there's a if there's a non-conforming situation and you don't meet the 15 foot setback, but you're at least you have at least a 10 foot setback, the zoning allows for you to extend along that same non-conforming plane okay. um, without any additional approvals. Okay. Um, so Great. that's been addressed Very through fair. the zoning. Very fair. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, we, we I ran into something in East Hampton. They were not that fair. Yeah. <laughs> they want to make it as easy as possible to build these other homes. And yeah, um, and you understood you had a discussion about the traffic mitigation because you're adding <laughs> yeah. that you will pay into our traffic mitigation fund. <laughs> no, we didn't have that ah. So yeah, it's in the the zoning requires each new incremental increase in trips generated peak hour trips generated um and in the urb district it's a much lower standard than because of the proximity to the bike path and walkability so it's a one it, without improvements to the street traffic calming or sidewalks the um the rate is um one thousand dollars one time payment in lieu of traffic implementation um and that's due upon the certificate of occupancy. It's ironic. We just had that discussion <laughs> about the big the big one on pleasantry, but they're not paying into any mitigation because of their zoning district where we're encouraging those kind of uses. So it's also ironic that we had that big project and all we got was a little, oh, 11 by 17 piece of paper. And this was a very good presentation. Okay. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's off to you. They should, they should have hired you. To yeah, present. It will. Yeah, it will. It was the most creative way we can come up with to fit all five. Yeah. I lived in a situation like that, and we just shared car keys. We all had duplicate copies, and you moved your neighbor's car when you had to. Yeah. I haven't heard that about the front facing. Is that a thing in this zone? I didn't realize. You can't yeah. back out onto the street. Yeah. It's for anywhere if, with. If you have um, more than a two family on a property, oh, it's for two families. Yeah, or more than two. Families. Yeah, more, more than, than two. two. Oh, I see. Okay. Is that any zone or just this? Well, it's mostly affects residential zones. Yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah. Great. Should we open it up to the public? Yes. Is there anyone here in City Council Chambers who would like to speak to this application? And Carolyn, did you receive any chats? It's a quiet night at the planning board. Jeez. Okay. Yeah, th thank you for the presentation. It's great. And I, I, I love how you made the mouse, the little red dot there. That makes it easy to follow, too. I got to try that. Um, any other? Well, is there a motion to close the public hearing? Do we have any more questions for the applicant? I move to close the public hearing. Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Public hearing's closed, so we can't ask you any more questions or your, your All right. team. All right. Um, and so I think we have our conditions about the uh, the protection of the catch basin. Um, and the line. And the, the line, right? Protection of that and the line. And 
<laughs> Prior to the issuance of a building permit, the drain line itself should be clearly marked and protected from excavators. And then prior to issuance of a final CO, the applicants will make a one-time payment in lieu of traffic mitigation to address the uh, required incremental impacts of $1,000 in this situation. I don't think there was anything else. Um, the conditions the responding to the DPW were kind of boilerplate. All right. Any other discussion? Okay, is there a motion? I move to approve the site plan on Lincoln Avenue with the conditions specified. Second. Second by David. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay. Good luck with your project. Thank you. And it was nice. <laughs> Allie, good to see you out there too. Storms, they're all so low, right? Like they're all at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You in a butter? You're not in a butter. Right, no, I mean, I live right there. A few trees away. You're close. Right. I was up in Burlington over the weekend, and there's a huge, uh, fairly large kind of innovation center development there with co working and office space, and whatever. And half of their parking lot is set up as tandem parking, which I've never seen before in a commercial space. So I don't know how exactly they've arranged it, but it's like you're some other per of hundreds of people working there and someone else is. And walking it saved in. space by doing that. It mm -hmm. saved all those middle. Yeah, it's right on the waterfront. Yeah. yeah. I had that. We went to the felt building. Oh. It's mythology. It's like this alley. Yeah. Like yes. Park three or four cars down in the alley. Yeah. Then we'd have to go. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. It's like places that get like crazy in the morning, you know, like thousands again. They have to do that. Huh. <laughs> Okay, well, at this time, we'll open up a uh, a hearing to amend a special permit site plan to remove trees by sovereign builder, um, Todd Salura at 66 Ridgeview Road, map ID 48-027. And we need a simple majority of four um, for this approval. Good evening, board. My name is Rich Ricardi. I'm here from Pioneer Land Land. I'm the Sovereign Builders for proposed amendment to special permit at 66 Ridgeview Road. Uh, the proposed special permit uh, would amend a special permit issue in February 21st, 2005. And it's to expand the limit of work uh, in order to remove 19 trees from the property. I'm assuming that it has been submitted with the understanding that any work done is an undertook buffer. Uh, we need to be approved, approved by the conservation commission prior to work. So on screen, you'll see a, a plan showing the end of the buffer line. That's the end of the word. Could you expand that a little bit? I, I... I went uh, I went up there today, and I must say I struggled to, to be able to find anything on this plan, mm -hmm. especially because I don't have a big plotter, so I can't. <laughs> Print out this. Um, and the trees weren't marked. They're, they're marked lightly with a white dot down at the base. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, George. Treasure hunt. I see the white dot. <laughs> I see it. So the proposed trees to be removed, um, expand the limit of work, and would reduce the buffer from the wetland uh, to a minimum, well, minimum of 65 feet, take them to zero, and the upper still fence will propose to be removing later. So in a nutshell, why do you want to remove the trees? Ah, there you go. Absolutely. 
So the trees are tall and some of them are not good condition. They're in striking distance from the house. So we're, you know, um, and to, to go back a little further back when this was approved, uh, I, I really didn't notice this language in, in the approval. So had I noticed it, I might have asked that it not be. I mean, essentially the language states that we proposed a plan and proposed some footprints that were all outside the 100 foot buffer. Which you, which you would typically do because you don't know what you're building. Mm -hmm. And so that language was, was put in, a, in, in this special grant approval, which then this would, you know, is the reason I'm here tonight. Um, I don't know that, that that's typical, but it was there. And so that, you know, that triggers us trying to amend the special grant. I think it's pretty common that work is done inside the 100 foot buffer. And we're really not asking to go too far within, and we know we have to go for a pond But there's some really tall uh, pine trees and other trees that are not in great condition that, that would be in striking distance of the house. And that's the reason. And, and excuse me, I should probably know this, but the special permit was for the whole cul de sac or just this one building lot? The whole subdivision. The whole subdivision. It was a yep. cluster open, residential yep. open space in a completely pristine. Part yep. of the city. So it is common that the Conservation Commission certainly recommends that there be a disturbed zone for these areas. And this abuts, it's now conservation area, which was part of the cluster open space. And there's a wetland there that sort of crosses over into the conservation area. Um, but can you just, it looks like the trees that are closest to the house are smaller that you're Xing out. Can you describe a little bit more the the height and the type of trees? Because they're not pine trees, I didn't see. I think this uh, one way towards pine right here. This is a 10 scale plan, which is pretty unusual to see. And so the, the scale, yeah. It's a scale on the other one. Again, the distance from the trees to the property. Right, so that 20 inch pine tree is about 100 feet away from the proposed structure. And, and then the oh, the turnaround, driveway turnaround, it would be 30 feet away from that one. So it's, the pine tree is not 100 feet tall. It wouldn't. So these trees are over 100. Some of these trees, yeah. What? Uh, so, what? Can you point to the pine tree again that's coming down? Does it have an X through it? Because I don't see that yeah. with an X in it. Oh, the pine kind of has an X. It's like a lot of X's together make a pine tree. So. <laughs> So the 20, the 20 the, inch pine, I see, the, yeah. very hard to tell that that also has an X. So all of the trees that are on, can you clarify all the trees within the 100 foot buffer that are marked here, are your interest in taking them all down? No, no. Oh. only the ones with an X through it. So any symbol you see, there's a 12 inch red maple. Uh, you'll see there's no crossing mark at all on that symbol. That would be remaining. Oh, okay. So I definitely misread I, and misled, therefore misled the planning board. Yeah. Because <laughs> I didn't see the X's there. So not all the trees on this plan are shown. Uh, it's still 19. Are... We're looking at 19, though. 19 trees is still the number. Correct. There's more trees shown on this, but so that some of the surrounding trees will be made. Mm. And the, the silt. The, the line that's drawn here, is that the current silt fence up there or is this the 100, um, 100 foot buffer zone? What you're seeing is the total silt fence. So it, there is some silt fence out there at the 100 foot buffer and then the new silt fence would be placed along the new board. What about in the photos? Is that silt fence at the 100 foot? Yeah. Right, the photos we're seeing is the 100 foot buffer line and they're saying, when they when they remove these trees, they would put so they would change the silt fence in this photo to right to be back to or be back further. Right. So there's actually a bunch of tree removal in here that's actually outside of the hundred foot buffer and actually is of no correct. The stuff that's over the property line, even 
which I assume, I don't know if you own the, you own both we properties. Okay. That area. But, but we don't even need to give any permission for anything outside of the hundred foot buffer. So that's sort of perpendicular to this. Say that again. Perpendicular to the previous. Well, I mean, it's like our previous special permit only applies to things that are within the hundred foot buffer. Right. 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 So these trees that are X'd out that are outside the hundred foot buffer are allowed by right to remove and we don't right. have any say over it. And I'm and so Carolyn, this is one of those places where the the cons common planning board kind of overlap and mess together. Wouldn't this be a, a, a better place to go to the cons comp first? Um so it, it no, because it's not just a conservation commission wetlands issue. So this is now buffer to a wetland that is feeds into the city owned conservation area. And as part of the overall approval of the cluster development, the board at the time looked at development footprint yep. and what made sense for footprint and what was appropriate. So that's why this um, line was drawn saying, okay, this is your development footprint. Yep. So um, I don't think you need to worry so much about who goes first in this. I think it's an evaluation of footprint, um, loss of tree, canopy, and given the situation in this context. And then Conservation Commission is going to look at, you know, the resource area impacts for under the Wetlands Protection Act. Part of what happened here, I think, is that most of the uh, the homes in the in the development are modest size, and this one is not. This one is a uh, right. It expanded beyond any foreseen footprint. It, it is that, but it's also that we proposed a footprint, and they were at the time to do that. And, and you wouldn't compose a footprint that encroaches on hundred wetland if you could compose a footprint that doesn't encroach on that. The, you know, the, this is property that we own, so to speak. It's, it's yep. on our property. It's very typical and fairly common to go inside the 100 foot. But because the language is written that we proposed at the time, all of our footprints outside of, and our footprint is outside yep. of the 100 foot, but the trees are within proximity of the house. It's legal to have trees in the proximity of your house. So, I mean, I think I kind of agree with what I think I'm hearing from George is I, I would feel really weird approving something like this, not because it gives Conscom the message that like, we're like, we think it's great. And I don't have a really a feeling one way or the other. I think Conscom should make a decision and I would I would wait for them. So we will be asked to, to, to proceed here first. So that's fine. So what can the that? conservation commission even do? I don't know what they do. They wave they're magic wand. No, no, no. But I mean, like, there's a condition that they can't, they can't touch within the hundred foot buffer. I don't think the conservation commission can do any touch thing within the hundred foot. No, no, no. This condition for this permit it says you can't. Permit says they can't. Yeah. So they can't even go to Conscom and ask because of the permit. Uh, right. So. Right. They have to come to us first. Yeah. Uh, so. The, would this set a precedent for all the other homes on the lot, all the other homes in the subdivision, to yeah. be able to? No, I um this I is this is this special permit amendment for this lot showing particular trees that they want to take down, and so if they're taking trees down, it also extends and creates a lawn area that's upland of right. the um of the wetland resource right. area, and so. And that, that, you know, opens up a right. clearing and makes, you know, changes the context of this edge of the neighborhood. We've had a lot of conversations about the buffers and the wetland demarcations that in many places we want to put in concrete bounds so that mm -hmm. the, the actual homeowners don't start all of a sudden just building lawn inside these buffer areas, you know, um, because it changes hands and changes hands and people just keep moving their lawns out, out, out. Um, yeah, and and uh, boy, I I have a couple of big trees in my house that worry that that worry me sometimes. But I'm not about to take them down. Um, that's interesting. Um,
So you mentioned that, can you just clarify, so there's a 20 inch pine that's, that's you said is within a hundred feet of the house. <clears throat> um, and so is the pine a hundred feet tall? That's what I asked them. All these trees are over a hundred feet. Uh -huh. And then what about the 10 inch pine and the 12 inch pine and the eight inch maple? Some of them are not in good condition, so we really didn't, you know, yeah, we some of them are, are dying quite obviously. Some of the maples are in terrible condition, so that's why we added them to the list. Yeah. Because that a little. The owner was proposing a lot of landscaping along there as well, so he's going to add back a lot of trees, and there is no, so there's no, we're not changing the, you know, the view of the house. None, none of the neighbors, there's, there's a lot of trees between it and the cul-de-sac, so they're, so we're not, you know, increasing the, or decreasing the, the uh, privacy of the neighboring lots in any way. The cul-de-sac is sort of directly in front of the area that we're proposing to cut the trees, and they're just, they're, they're 65 feet of area full of trees, and some that are large, before the wetland, and then there's more on the other side of the wetland. Yep. So we really have a big buffer of trees between this property line or this area and the cold assignment for other houses. Yeah, I don't think our concern is allowing sites from the other houses from neighbor to neighbor. I don't think that's really our concern. It's more about, <clears throat> it's a part of what's special about this development, it's in the woods. And the woods have trees that get sick and die and decay. And, uh, you know, especially around the buffer areas. Um, that's part of why it's so special to live there, I think. Um, you know, um, I am concerned that, yeah, it just becomes manicured. It's a lovely house. Yeah, they're sinking a lot of resources into that. I'm sure they want it to be park like. Um, but Park Lake is not always, you know, a goal of ours. Um, so I can understand, as David said, you have, it's well within your right to take out any of the trees that are outside of the 100-foot buffer. Um, but we set up that, I, I believe we set up this um, condition for for a purpose back. The language in the special press says that basically I, I offer to stay outside the 100-foot buffer. But I don't at the time recall that. Basically, what it says is the language says the construction of the new unit, units as shown on the plan will be outside of the 100 foot buffer. So we presented a plan that showed the footprints outside the buffer. So that, had I known that that language was going to force me to not be able to do what many other uh, homeowners do, which is typically people are allowed almost, you know, re routinely to go up to the 50 foot. So I'm asking to go 15 feet or, or 25 feet, you know, 35 feet within to remove some trees, but we're, but we're not affecting the weapon. So it's, it's very common that Cons Conservation Commission allows work within, you know, up to the 50 foot and sometimes within the 50 foot. So I'm, I'm well outside of that. And I, and, you know, I really feel like I'm being forced to comply with something uh, more stringent than is common and typical because of the language in the special plan at the time. I think the other, just so you know, there have been several subdivisions. Ice Pond had that same condition. Um, and um, maybe Cardinal Way, but there were several in that yeah. era. Yeah. I think it's important to note that all uh, that area will be investigated in the previous areas proposed within the hundred buffer and the buildings are proposed within the hundred buffer. So it remains green space. Just an expanded number of work to kind of take out these trees temporarily. While there are some subdivisions that do maintain their ties, maintain 100 feet buffer, there's many that have been moved in this area up to and in the previous area. Sure. Yep. Uh, regarding trees outside, there's a buffer, I think there is language in the special permit that requires all trees that are to be removed to be approved. That's why you included all these in the plan. All trees, uh, and how are they defined? All trees. Um, uh, that part of the common driveway, I think tree warden went out there to look at trees that were going to be removed and trees that are within the subdivision need approval. Yeah. So, 
general part of the special mm -hmm. Remember, the So, Carolyn, just um, in this, in our agenda here, in the first bullet underneath here, it says site plan review, simple majority vote required for shared driveway. Was that just a typo? That's not, that's not, oh, it may be black. Yeah. No, there's yeah. no shared driveway. No, there's no, there's shared, no shared driveway. driveway. How no. do you get to this house yeah. without going through the 100 foot? No, but there's no permit request for a shared driveway. This already has a shared driveway. Okay. Yeah. It already has the permit. Right. Sure. As part of the original approval. Oh, because it was shown on the plan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering how you would even get to this house without going through the 100 foot buffer. Um, so this is essentially like clearing out a front yard. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I didn't walk around the back of the house to see if there are also 100-foot trees back there um, that are still standing, um, you know, that that jeopardize the roof line or anything. Um, but it, it seems like the house is pretty close to the woodlands in the backyard also. So I'm not sure why you wouldn't be taking down. I don't recommend you taking down all of those trees also. Um, Looks like it's right up against the property line in the back. Is this the back of the house or the front of the house? You're saying the front of the house. That's the front of the house. So your north arrow is backwards? Where's the cul-de-sac yeah, in relationship so. to this? Okay, so your north arrow is... Your north arrow is backwards. Well, I'm assuming the arrow is pointing north, but it's actually pointing south, right? Which way is north on that drawing? Point point to the direction of north. North is, is okay. The north arrow is backwards. South. That's why I was south. confused. So. <laughs> yeah, south arrow. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> okay, so that's a north chain. Okay, this area. I see. All right, so the cul-de-sacs here. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Had it all backwards. Yeah. So I guess like so we have a uh eight inch red maple that you're asking to take away, but then like that's like oh, I don't know, I can measure it on here or whatever, it doesn't matter. And then you have a 12 inch white pine that's much closer, and that is is it is that saying is that an X or is that the pine symbol? It's hard to tell. It's very difficult to tell. Oh, there you go. X. Okay. Okay, that's good. It's a white pine X. Okay. Very hard to read. Were you able? Yeah, I can't expand my. I mean, you can look on my tiny screen. No, you can see the oh, the tiny X there. Yeah, yeah. X at the end of the yeah. yeah. So again, how many trees have an X that are within a hundred foot buffer? Just one that I could see two right on the line. There's a bunch. There's a bunch. Yeah, it's not good. Yeah. Now that you mentioned that there's an X next to the label. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That helps. Yes. I think what we're struggling with is that, I mean, this is like pretty typical kind of site plan approval from 2005. I mean, we see these all the time. 
And other than like the homeowner wants a different shape of house that's bigger or whatever and doesn't want it to be near the trees that happen to be there, like what's the reason like that we shouldn't like because we weren't I, I was doing things I don't even remember in 2004. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like we don't have any other insight other than like your anecdotal like you know which I, i'm not saying that's wrong i just i don't know like what's the reason other than like homeowner doesn't want it i don't get it two reasons uh -huh. one is some are in striking distance they're really tall enough to hit the house uh -huh. damage yeah without a doubt and, and maybe we take another visit out there some of our are dead or dying uh -huh. so those are the reasons that we want to get your permission to remove the trees so I have a question about that 22 inch in the elbow, 22 inch pine. It's yeah. further away than the 20 inch pine um, and a 16 inch pine. Um, it might, and a 10 inch oak all was sort of in that area. Yeah. Um, it's not, it seems like the board is trying to understand the rationale for taking all of those out. You've mentioned a couple that might be large and in striking distance, but it it's hard to see that the all of them are large and within striking distance. Yeah. Of course they are. They are not all large. I mean, some of them are in bad condition, not doing well. So some of them are, are dead and they're ready to fall. Yep. And then I would bet if they fall and they fall, you know, um, outside of the hundred foot buffer line, then the homeowner would get somebody to clean them up if he, he or she didn't like the look of them. The process would still be the same. We would go inside the, the hundred foot and we would have to ask permission to do that. Or we should ask permission to do that, I should say. Yep. Yeah. That would be well, fun. if you're taking vehicles in there. Yeah. And you would need mechanized equipment to, to, remove, to remove these if they, if they fall. Uh, you're not going to go in there by, you know, these are some of these are large trees. I mean, that's, you know, yeah. we have a, you know, a trail advance to get out little bits of wood. <laughs> We're talking about a hypothetical tree that like falls half in the buffer and half out. So, like, they have the legal right to remove the part that's outside the 100 foot. I mean, yeah. I mean, the fact is, if this house was further from the 100 foot buffer, out of tree fall danger, like this wouldn't be an issue, right? There was no footprint on the house, I guess, in the special permit. Is that the issue? Like, this footprints can change after the special permits are approved. Yeah, it's just a yeah. concept. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Right. But what presumably can't change without an amendment is like, this is the area you have to build the thing. So, I mean, what you're saying with the impact. Yeah. I yeah. guess the other rationale is that. There are many individual lots that are approved that are in proximity of wetlands and it's fairly routinely allowed. And that's like the number of people that you see to go in, you know, within the 50 foot. I mean, the 50 foot is really the, the typical sort of no disturbance zone. Um, so it's fairly common. So it's so to me, it's logical to allow us to remove number of trees that might hit the house. Yeah, it probably happens a lot without planning board approving it, right? That generally yeah. a lot sure. the conservation because there's not a yeah but cluster and uh, cluster development is a different animal. Yeah, yeah. I, I I just think the rationale of that a tree may hit the house is to to me rather dubious. Um people build houses all the time. Um trees grow up from a certain size to another size within a generation. Um, sometimes they're taken down because people are worried, but um, I just don't see the the magnitude of this removal because a couple of them are 100 feet tall. This house built? Yeah. They're still doing a lot of work around it, though. There's some gorgeous stone work happening up there, for sure. Um, and, I, and again, I didn't get to see the backyard, but, um, I, I, you know, I'm, I think there's a big drop off there, so it's not going to be... There's not going to be a place to kind of do any kind of recreation. And so maybe the, the difference between the front and the back is we don't own it. The city owns that property, that uh -huh. open space. So yeah. This the front piece is on our property. Yeah. So um just a question for clarification, because the plans don't show this, but this is the pictures that you submitted. There's a lot of understory there. So um 
going in to remove these trees wouldn't be a surgical operation. You'd have to go in and clear a path to take those out. So it's more, and that path also can suit as a, you know, a tree, um, a buffer for the falling trees as well. Um, you know, you could get caught up on that. So, I mean, this is pretty fairly dense. Um, so it seems that even if you're going in to just get these pinpoints here, that it would really result in a lot more clearing. Is that the plan? Yeah. No, I don't think that. No, it, it is inserted fully, but, and so you know, that's why there's a limit of work, that's why we're moving the, the silt dust out to do that. Um, are we planning to clear all of you know, we, We're not, we're not going to wipe out the coral and everything else that's in there. Uh, or, or increase the size of the yard at all. We really just want to remove the tree house. We've got for the purpose of more lawn or more, you know, landscaping. Yeah. It is, it's really for the purpose of removing dead or dying trees, those that are not healthy, and tall trees that, that uh, and there's some really big pines that are, that are um, on our property that, that are, you know, that they're worried about that yep. it's going on to damage the house and yep. or injuring on in the process. I'm sorry, I thought I did hear you say that they were planning on doing additional landscaping, but is that's elsewhere on the oh, property? It's in the area that we're allowed. Okay. We're not going to increase the size of the lawn or of course. Um they're they're planning landscaping outside of the hundred or up okay. to the hundred foot buffer. Um this this work is within the buffer. But the goal is to not, you know, not to remove all of the understory and, and create more law. And that's not what we're doing. I, I, no, at this point, no. But we've seen it happen across the city. That that's what happened over time. You know, and, and I'm struggling with this because certainly this is in a wooded area. There's conservation area around. It's not going to be a huge loss to the canopy. There's lots of more trees within a stone's throw. Um, Behind. Um, behind in front to the side sure um the that whole mineral hills conservation area is a lovely spot there's plenty of uh canopy there i'm just I, i'm more concerned about it's an area that at some point would be you know a forester would go in and do some maintenance on the street and be like part of that but you know there, there there's a lot of woodland around yep. this really surrounded yep. by many many large trees yeah Today is the first step in the permitting process, and we're pulling it by conservation. We're going to expect quite a bit of pushback from them. You know, any trees that are removed are possibly mitigated, offsite or onsite with plantings. Today, we're just seeking the approval to go in front of Town Con and request these trees to be removed. But your approval of the change in their work is an approval of tree removal, necessarily. Right? They are going to put us through the ringer. Yeah. I think that's right. I mean, I think I agree with what people are saying about, yeah, like a responsibly managed forest. Like you do take trees down, right? They don't last. But that's fine. Um, I agree that Conscom is going to have a higher um, threshold for approval. I do worry about this approval sort of swaying them in favor of like, well, they said it was okay. You know, it's hard to avoid that whenever you have these two approvals. I would say I would imagine Onscom would ask for an arborist to go and like show me that these trees are falling down. Maybe it's obvious like a dead pine tree is a dead pine tree, but still like a little more systematic uh, documentation of like which trees and why um, seems like what Conscom. I can't read their minds. I, I don't know. Well, I mean, you have the jurisdiction. To right. Well, that's what I'm kind of thinking is like maybe that's what we need because I do agree. Like if there's a hundred foot dead pine tree it's not doing much for anything really and like if you just like get a chainsaw so when it does fall it falls that way i mean i don't know, that, I don't know. it's just well, it seems odd <laughs> yeah um train to remove these not 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 to, to fell them so that they're going to damage other trees we, we would go in with a train cut it and lay it down on a on an area outside of that. I don't know what Conscom's going to say about that. Maybe they want it to fall here. You know, I mean, that's that's what happens so, in the forest, right? So, but we're doing it in such a way that we're going to minimize the service with the, you know, the hundred foot.
Oh boy. Oh uh, boy. What was, what was that other development? Is it Sovereign Way that we had a couple months ago? Where they didn't want to. Um... And sovereign builders had nothing to do with Sovereign Way, right? Oh, well, <laughs> okay. but the Homeowners Association came to us and wanted the city to take over the road. And we had the conditions yeah. that you shall not come to us and ask us to take over the road. <laughs> no, that's Higgins Way. Uh, Emerson Way. Emerson. Oh, Emerson. That's it. So Emerson Way. I mean, I feel kind of similar to that. It's like whatever that board at that time was thinking, you know, they, they told us what they were thinking. They put it in writing and like no which is why they didn't make that a condition of the special permit yeah i mean the subdivision footprints are always concepts they're never right. meant to be exactly right, but... i mean the one thing if you're struggling i think david had a good suggestion is to get an arborist report to really understand what trees are you know in failing or poor condition or a threat so we could do that being before they go to the You could just continue it and have I mean, it. I don't know what CONSCOM normally does. Do they ask farmers to go and document forest land? I mean, it seems odd, you know? Not typically, but I mean, that's why I think you know, like this part about the buffer is things? about forested area. You guys deal with um, arborist reports regularly. It does seem like it would be appropriate if you're trying to figure out whether this is um, makes sense to reduce the buffer and allow a little bit more encroachment um, to see a more detailed analysis of what what's intended. Is this silt fence currently on the hundred foot buffer? It is. Right, because like they could have built the house right up to the hundred foot buffer and then asked for like. 50 more trees, right? Like there's no particular, I mean, that is the risk you take on by building closer to the buffer line. But I don't want anyone's houses to fall, you know, trees, dead trees to no. fall on someone's houses and no benefit to anyone, so. Yeah. And your point, Chris, is taken about that last permit, but I think part of the issue there was that that was going to create a burden to the city this does not it just creates um potential issue for the homeowner but it's not like the city is having to take responsibility for something so i'm not saying we should go against our predecessors on the board but i do think the circumstances are slightly different yeah but there's just you know a permit was obtained now kind of nibble at the edges of it yeah that was fine for 95% of the lots. Now we're at the last 5%. And... Well, that might be why it might be appropriate to, you know, as opposed to randomly nibbling, if you really saw an analysis of what was going on in this area, then you'd be making more of a, um, you know, your rationale would be based on a greater understanding of what the trees conditions are that they want to remove. This is a map wetland, or is this just like an assumed from the map? No, like someone not. actually did this. Yeah. I don't think it's been remapped though for this I process. Just to go in. I mean, we did we did ask him, you know, but he looked at the wetland line and re flagged it. And oh, he did. And okay. He found most of the flags before he did his last work. I love so plastic. His last project? What's that? Plastic is whatever. Yeah, that's what I mean. I think he's finished up his work. And it didn't move. It was where they thought it was, basically. It hadn't moved. It hadn't yeah. moved. Yeah. Yeah, he, he did both bomb flag and the new flag. Yeah, I don't know. I, I agree. I, it's nibbling around the edges. It's not also changing like the overall view of it i think like it's sort of like the rule of law part of it that i have a problem with like it is what it is like but i if there actually is a potential like dangerous situation it seems reasonable to like allow some leniency with trees that are like i know that the house was like a decision like the house didn't just spring out right, right. so 
I don't know. Yeah, and I I can't see the extra expense of getting an arborist to go in there, and then he or she decides that yes, of these nineteen trees, thirteen of them really need to come down. So there's all about say, for example, a six um, six tree difference. Um, and then in ten years, some of those trees then become diseased or they grow taller, and then the arborist comes back again. Um, And if we and if we uh we, can, so we have to kind of say like we can't just say you can go inside the hundred foot buffer. We have to say like, oh no, you can go some other distance, right? We have to make up some other thing, like because it's not well they're rain. proposing a sixty five foot buffer essentially in this area. We need a conservation that has to approve. So you just are giving us the permission to ask them permission. And it's the limited work, it's, it's clearly shown right here. It's yeah. So this isn't blanket for the whole development. This is only for this one specific lot, that specific limit of work. Yeah, it is. It is. Just for this <clears throat> part of the 100 foot buffer. And then if another homeowner, saw the work being done here and said, hmm, I think I might want to do some work up to 65 feet of the buffer. They would have to come to us Process. for an amendment yep. and then go to the CONSCOM mm -hmm. instead of just going out there on a Saturday afternoon with my chainsaw. It sure is. Yeah. It sure is. Yep. 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 Gotta figure out like a lightning bolt machine. There you go. Uh, That's a crane, right? <laughs> well, the the uh, the person has made a really big investment up there for sure. Um, and I think uh, the lot has been protected pretty well. The the conservation area is there. Um, many of the trees aren't. There's there's nothing about the mitigation fund that they if they take down something, it's not during the course of construction when they remove trees, so they they wouldn't have to replace trees. I we know the homeowner has their best intentions of replacing trees. I am going to go out there five years from now to see what happens up there, but <laughs> make sure there's not a pickleball court there. Thirty nine birthday. So, you know, I'm 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 inclined, I'm inclined to let them move forward to the to in this situation to allow this and and let them move forward to the CONSCOM. Um I, I went up there today, you know, and, and these pictures do so it's so and many of the trees will remain within that um hundred foot buffer, you know, the small ones, the understory. Um, yeah, I know that you can't be judicious when you're doing that kind of work. Even if you have a crane, you're going to lose some, but within five years, a lot of those will come back again. Um, I, I am just worried about the precedent of uh, allowing everybody else on Ridgeview to start pushing back the buffer zone. But I, I guess if each one of them has to go to the CONSCOM, it would give them pause. Yeah, I feel like... And the planning board. And the planning board. <laughs> I mean, I guess I feel like in some ways, like the planning board like it's Conscom's job to like protect the wetland and the buffer and all that. And from, from my point of view, I feel like it's kind of like, is the overall amount of forested area and open area sort of correct? And it seems like a quite a marginal change to what the original approval was when you look at it from that scale. Um, as long as there's some, I mean, I do, want the cons to do their job you know because i don't think that again i don't know if there's anything magic about 100 feet right like yep. no it's, it's the bend buffers are even any buffer is is a is a it's a buffer it's not you know right. it's not in itself the sensitive area um but um prove it with prejudice <laughs> that means they can't come back. <laughs> Not only the conservation commission knows. <laughs> right. 
with reservations. We approve it with reservations. Well, I feel like sometimes when we've made recommendations to council, we've said we've sort of added addendums, and I don't know if there are any we could add here, like we approve with reservations or with a suggestion that you might want to get an arborist report or something that just says, you know, we're not 100% sold on this, but trust you to make a good decision. I don't know quite what that would be. Thank you. Right. Uh, yeah. and, and Chris, I appreciate what you brought up. You know, who knows what's uh, 15, 20 years ago, you know, that the other, which, and I was sitting on the board at that point. I can't remember this clearly, <laughs> but I think we spent a lot of time because this was way out um, on the far reaches, exactly the kind of development we didn't really want to see. Mm -hmm. um, without public utilities, without, you know, so infrastructure. So um, we we worked a lot, uh, very hard to set up these buffers um, and these footprints. And you can see it now when you go out there, the houses are established, but they're all small lawns. Um, there's a nice path into the Mineral Hills area. Um, so by and large, I think what the planning board did set forth has really kind of happened. Um, I haven't walked in everybody's backyard to see if they had ropes on the buffer, but that'll be another day. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm inclined to uh, you know approve this application with reservations. What the cons count? I I don't like the rationale about trees being going to fall on the homes. I know that can happen, but. Uh, you know, they chose this lot and they, they there's a lot of big majestic trees right behind their house and those two could fall whether they're city or their trees. So that's a kind of a dubious argument, but I understand that uh, they want to clean things up a little bit. Um, did we ask for comment? Did we close the public hearing? Did we open the public hearing? Did we open the public Is there anyone in the room who would like to comment on this application? <laughs> There's nobody in the chat room. What a quiet night. Okay. Um, is there a motion to close the public hearing? Someone. Ooh. I'll second. Second by Dana. Thank you. Any discussion? So we can't ask these two gentlemen. Any more non-answerable questions? All those in favor? Aye. Um, so unless anybody wants to editorialize a little bit more, we could have a motion. I do think it's important, sort of the last thing it was said is all the time people go out there with the chainsaw and we never see them, especially this is something that was approved 20 years ago. Like the fact is that the applicant did come here and ask, maybe it's because he has to go to Conscom also, but I don't know. Like is doing the right thing and I appreciate that. And I think there's a scale issue on the drawings. I agree. If you draw the trees like the size that they are, I think it actually looks like a more minor uh it's bigger trees that you're taking away, but the overall forest line is not changing in such a drastic way. I don't know how wetlands work in this person would know, so I don't know. But they have to deal with that. Right? Yep. Thanks. So we could use a motion to approve or deny. <laughs> the application at 66 Ridgeview Road by Severn Builders. <laughs> um, Is there a second? Thank you, Stacey. Motion's been made and approved with a second. Um, any more discussion? Okay. All those in favor? All those opposed? So, <laughs> well, I didn't see your... No. She seconded. Well, seconded, but and you're in favor, so it's three to two. We'll pass it to our parliamentarian. What does that mean? Does not pass. It needs a four, a vote of four. Yes. For an amendment. 
Yep. And this is what the amendment process is all about. Um, so what is the applicant's next step? They still go to CONSCOM? Lori, this permit hasn't been modified yet. Mm -hmm. So they can't go to the mm -hmm. So they... Approved with prejudice just now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, So can they come back to us with an arborist report or any other detailed drawings or they have to wait a certain amount of time before they re reapply? <laughs> well, nothing. I mean, you, you didn't approve it. Right. So there was not a withdrawal. So yes, they could come back. And with an arborist report, that's different because mm -hmm. that's more information. In other words, even if it was a disapproval, they could still come back. It's a different application. Right. Okay. Very good. Okay, so the um, the application to amend the special permit was not approved at this point. All right. Thanks for coming tonight. Thanks for the discussion. Thank you for your time. Thanks. And no chat. You need more numbers on the board. That's for sure. That's for sure. Yep. Yes. Middle school open house today, and we still came. That's true. <laughs> I skipped out after the third period. Uh -huh. yep. huh? What? <laughs> Jail for kids. Thank you. Good reports. Thank you for your time. Okay, Thanks. so long. I don't have any ARs, I don't think. And um, that one set of minutes. Did everybody get those? I did, and you know what? I have a couple of comments. I wish I had sent it to you first in writing rather than, but uh, <laughs> you want to put it to the next meeting? And then I'll send you my comments in writing. Okay. Because I'll have the other ones. Okay. And I was just rushing to get them done. So Good. I'm yep. not surprised. I that I <laughs> no, no. Let me let me send you a little okay. email about them. Oh. Um, let me just double check about the ANR. Oh, but I didn't post. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Who's out there? Nobody's out there on Zoom World. I think that's the first application we didn't approve in two and a half years first one that wasn't unanimous probably probably yeah probably also the first hearing in a long time that john hansel wasn't at but oh yeah he missed the bad couple yeah i'd love to go back in time for precedent yeah it's a tricky one yeah it's like that's what the board thought at the time so yep. that's I... what the developer agreed to and yeah I just sat here and just couldn't quite bring myself to say yes, which I felt meant that I should say no. There you just... go. That's good. I'm the same way until it works. Came along and you thought you were sitting on that board. Yeah. And yeah. I didn't have anybody sitting on the board that he's kind of on the board. He's so different. I just want uh, mm -hmm. my decisions honored 20 years. Did you know what's the. No, it's tricky. But that pine tree was only this tall 20 years ago. <laughs> I don't like the inflexibility though. I think like I wish we could have Conscom like wait. Like if Conscom said, yeah, it's fine, like for this and this reason, like I would totally approve. Like, oh and obviously I approved it anyway. But I approved it on the sense that like Conscom would do their job and look at in an I mean they could potentially go to conservation commission with just sort of hypothetical or something. I mean, it's hard to do it. I mean, they could they I suppose they could say, can what they could apply and then just know that it may mean nothing if the planning board never. So they could technically go to conservation commission. That's the, the it's the technical part of it is my reservations. And that's what they would be addressing. Yeah. Right. I mean to me, if they if they were taking down these trees because they generally were worried about them and then restoring yeah. a buffer area to Enhancing yeah. state, but that's not our place to no. say. That's conservation to say. 
Right, we just use this blanket like hundred foot thing, which I agree. I mean, they are right. Like it, you see 150, 60, you know, you see it all over the place in different places. Maybe we could adjourn our meeting first and then just sure. Are we allowed to talk about it? Is there a motion to adjourn? Huh? Are we allowed to talk? Well, it's not an open hearing anymore, but yes, I move we close the hearing. The, we close the meeting. Is there a second? Okay. All those in favor? 